Hi and welcome to WEH videos. My name is Skip and in this video we will continue to look at air pressure and density or pressure altitude and density altitude and we're going to take a quick look at the altimeter. Now let's start with a quick look on how the altimeter works. So let's go to the FAA website and check out the Pilot Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, Chapter 8. And look again at the instruments that work off of air pressure. So we see here, remember we have our pedal tube, and this is on the wing of the airplane, and as the airplane moves through the air, we get air forced here, ram air. And this goes to our airspeed indicator. And then you remember we had a static port on the side of the airplane, and this also goes to the altimeter and our vertical speed indicator. Now these two work off just static pressure. Only the airspeed indicator works off the pitot and the static air pressure. All right, to understand how the altimeter works, we need to understand a bit more about atmospheric pressure. And as I mentioned in the last video, there are two pressures critical to flying pressure altitude and density altitude. I'm sure you have all heard that the air gets thinner the higher we go. And a rule of thumb is for every 1,000 feet of altitude we lose one inch of mercury. So if the pressure altitude is standard 29.9 or 2 at sea level, at 1,000 feet the pressure will read 28.9 or 2 inches of mercury. And if we were at 2,000 feet, we would get a pressure reading of 27.9 or 2. So how exactly does pressure altitude affect the performance on a 172? And we can find that by looking at the pilot operating handbook. And in section 5, we can see we have takeoff distances here. And this is for short field takeoffs. And if we come down here, we have pressure altitude at sea level. And then we have different temperatures up here, depending on the outside temperature. Temperature, You would choose one of these uh, charts here. So at sea level, let's just go to 10C we have a ground roll or how far we have to scoot down the runway before we can lift off. And at sea level, at 10 degrees C, we need 775 feet of ground roll. Now this is where the temperature kicks in too. If we had 30 C, we would need an additional 120 feet of ground roll here. Now it says 895 feet. And if we come down here to a pressure altitude of 8,000, at 10 C, we need 1,675 feet. And at 30 degrees C, we need 1,945 feet of ground roll before we will take off. That's a huge difference. So if you're trying to take off on a short field and you are in hot temperature and high altitudes, you may run out of runway before you get airborne. So let's take a look and see what the FAA has to say about aviation weather. This is an advisory circular that was put out in 2016 and it's on the FAA.gov website and I'll put the address down here in just a second. But let's take a look and see what they have to say about air pressure and temperature and how it affects the airplane and the altimeter. So let's go to section 5 in this weather advisory. And here we have a figure 515 and it's a good visual as to how temperature affects the altimeter, showing the difference between true altitude and indicated altitude. All right, we have three blocks of air here, each with the same mass, or we could say the same number of air molecules. The middle mass is at standard air pressure, 29.9 or 2, as are the other two. 
and a temperature of 15 degrees C. This is the standard atmosphere, 29.92 and 15 C. So we see here under the standard conditions, under the standard atmospheric conditions, we have an indicated altitude of 10,000 feet and a true altitude of 10,000 feet. But when we come over here in the cold air mass, we have a problem. The pressure is still 29.92, but the temperature is lower. So the air is heavier, more compressed, so to speak, as you see depicted here. We have the same air mass and the same air pressure. And you can see under these conditions, the indicated altitude would be 10,000 feet, but our true altitude is 9,000 feet. Now in the warmer air example here, we have the same mass, we have the same pressure, but here our altitude indication is 10,000 feet, but our true altitude is 11,000 feet. So you can see the effects that temperature has on our altimeter. My point here is to have you realize the effects of air pressure and temperature and how it affects your airplane's performance. In the first example, the short field takeoff, we saw we needed much more ground roll before we could lift off because of the thinner air making the wings and the propeller less effective. So at high altitudes or high temperatures, the air is thinner, so the performance of the airplane declines. Now there's so much more to understand about pressure and density altitude. You should check out YouTube or other videos. This topic could take up a whole series in itself, and that's just not the intent of this series. So let's take a quick look at the altimeter. Now, unless you are at high altitudes or in hot conditions, you really don't have to worry too much about the temperature and pressures we just talked about. However, there's one thing you must do before taking off and also during your flight, and that's to set the altimeter to the current weather conditions. And we do that here by turning this little knob and setting the pressure over here in this little window. Now I've set it up here for standard air pressure. So we are at Benton Field in Redding, California, and we have a pressure altitude of looks like 900 feet, almost 900 feet. Now we know that the airport elevation is 720 feet. So with this pressure altitude set, we can see that we have almost 200 feet difference in the pressure settings. So let's take a look and see what we have for the actual setting. And we're going to do that by taking a look at the map. So we click on the airport, which is Benton Field, and under details, we see that we have an altimeter setting of 29.72. So let's set that up in the altimeter. And we do that with this little knob here called Borrow. As we rotate this, it will change our settings, and we want 29.72. So let's just move this down to 2.9. 7.2. And as you can see, it came right down to our airport elevation. So we have compensated for the non-standard pressure. So you can see it's imperative to make sure that you have the correct altimeter setting in your altimeter. Otherwise, you could really get yourself in trouble. Well, I think I will stop here uh, just to keep this short. So make sure that you check out your pilot operating handbook in the performance section just to see how your airplane performs in different weather conditions. And you might want to download the aviation circular here on weather. A lot of information at the FAA site, and it'd be a good idea to read some of this stuff. Now, for most of your flying, you will just have to deal with the setting on the altimeter 
and make sure you have the current settings set. And if you're going to be doing long flights, then be sure to check with the ATIS on local airports or use your map and click on the airport and find the altimeter setting there. And you want to do that from time to time on your long flights. So next time we're going to have a look at the turn coordinator. And after that, we'll be doing some flying, finally. And we're going to go to another airport and deal with air traffic controllers. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please click the like button. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments section so others can benefit. And if you want to send me a message, that would be fine. So thanks again so much for watching, and God bless.